I once again welcome you all on the session on the nutraceuticals, herbs as a health food. In the today's session, we are going to discuss one of the drugs, amla. So let us move towards the amla. As you know that amla, it is a fruit which is a edible and it is having the vitamin C, which is going to act as an antioxidant. Further, the fruit possesses the health benefits in a both dried as well as the fresh forms. Moving towards the biological source of the amla, so it consists of dried and fresh fruits of Imblica officinalis belonging to family Euphorbiae. So amla, it is obtained from the dried and fresh fruits of Imblica officinalis belonging to family Euphorbiae. The synonyms for the amla are amlaki and Indian gooseberry. So these are the synonyms for the amla. Look at the image so that you will understand how the amla fruit looks like. It is rich with the vitamin C, which is going to act as an antioxidant, which is going to reduce the oxidative stress in the various chronic diseases. So moving towards the chemical constituents of the amla. Mainly, the amla comprises the gallic acid, elagic acid, vitamin C, amino acid, and the phylambine. So these are the major chemical constituents of the amla. Mainly, it comprises the tannin. It is an important dietary source of a vitamin C, certain minerals, and the amino acid. So it comprises the certain minerals, amino acids, as well as the vitamin C. The edible fruit tissue contains approximately three-fold of protein and 160-fold of ascorbic acid when it is compared with the apple. So amla fruit comprises approximately three folds of protein and one sixty fold of ascorbic acid when we are comparing the concentration with respect to apple. The dried pulpy portion of fruit contains the gallic acid approximately 1.32%, then the tannins, sugars approximately 36.1%, then gums 13.75%, albumin 13.08%, Crude cellulose 17.08%, mineral matter 4.12%, and moisture 3.83%. So these are the some of the chemical constituents of the amla. Let us see the remaining chemical constituents from the amla. As I have said that it comprises the tannin. So tannins, these are the mixtures of the gallic acid, elagic acid and the phylambine. These three tannins are present in the amla. There are certain alkaloidal constituents are also present in the amla, which are phylentidine and the phylentine. So these are the alkaloidal principles which are present in the amla. The immature fruit of the amla comprises indole acetic acid and the four other auxins such as A1, A3, A4 and a5. So immature fruit comprises the indole acetic acid and other four auxins such as A1, A3, A4 and A5. Furthermore, if you can consider apart from the fruit part, the leaves comprises the gallic acid, chibulic acid and the elagic acid. The seeds of the amla comprises the fixed oil, phosphatides and the different fatty acids. The bark comprises leucodelphinidine, tannins and proanthocyanidine. The root comprises the elagic acid and the lupiole. 
and if you can consider the fruit pulp which comprises gallic acid in all 1.32% of tannin then gum albumin and mineral matter so these are the chemical constituents of the amla mainly it comprises the tannins and the ascorbic acid some of the alkaloidal principles are also present in the amla it also contains certain minerals furthermore it also contains the proteins let us move towards the health benefits of the amla now all of you are aware about the types of phytoconstituents which are present in the amla as it is a rich source of a vitamin c furthermore it comprises the certain tannins right so by considering these things the amla is having so many health benefits so very first benefit it is having the ability to reduce the blood sugar level so it is going to be used in the management of the diabetes mellitus as it is going to decrease the sugar level and this might be due to the increase in the production of the insulin so that is one of the reason behind it the insulin production it is going to be increased and that could control the blood sugar level by the amla the health effects on the eye it is going to improve the eyesight furthermore the it is going to prevent the age related macular degeneration in the eyes as well as the conjunctivitis that is the inflammation so it is going to be useful in the sudden eye disorder when we are considering the brain it is going to improve the memory as well as the brain health furthermore it is going to be used in the dementia then as we know that it is a excellent source of vitamin c and apart from vitamin c there are certain other vitamins are also present in the amla like vitamin a e and apart from vitamin certain minerals are also present like iron and calcium so amla could be the one of the source for the iron and calcium along with the vitamins like vitamin a e and c which is having the health benefit furthermore the amla it is going to accelerate or the promotes the cell regeneration it is going to promote the cell regeneration which is important for the growth of body as we know that it comprises the vitamin c so it is a powerful antioxidant so amla juice is a great source of uh, vitamin c which is an important micronutrient that may boost the immune function so it is going to act as a immune modulator it is going to boost the immune system right due to presence of the vitamin c into the amla furthermore the amla juice could support liver health which may be due to its antioxidant content and anti inflammatory property it seems to be the amla comprises the anti inflammatory activity so it is going to promote the liver health due to presence of the sudden antioxidant constituents in it furthermore the amla could help to treat and prevent several digestive issues including gerd ibd diarrhea and stomach ulcer so amla it is having a great role in the management of the sudden gastrointestinal diseases and the disorders furthermore the amla may reduce the risk of uh, cardiovascular diseases that is heart diseases including cholesterol triglycerides then blood pressure levels as well as the inflammation topically it is going to be used in the certain skin diseases for example for glowing the of the skin to promote the hair growth prevents the graying of hair 
and it is going to act as hair conditioner. So amla topically is being used for the certain skin diseases and disorders, and also it is present in the some of the hair care products due to due to its properties. Like it is going to promote the growth of hair, it is going to prevent the graying of the hair, and it is going to act as hair conditioner. Furthermore, the amla is going to prevent the hair loss by increasing the hair growth by blocking the activity of specific enzyme and promoting the proliferation of certain hair follicle cells. Then amla extract may help to protect against the kidney damage and preserve the kidney function. So if you could see, it is having the major role in the management of the certain diseases related with the major organs like heart, liver, kidney, brain, right? Along with the eyes, then skin, hair, and so on. It is going to reduce the heartburn. It is going to reduce the bare cholesterol, so which is having a great role in the management of the certain cardiovascular diseases. Furthermore, it helps to fight the common cold, improves the eyesight. It is going to burn the fat, which could be helpful to reduce the weight and furthermore prevent the certain chronic diseases like diabetes mellitus and the certain cardiovascular diseases. Then it is going to build the immunity. It uh, beautifies the hair. Then it improves the skin glow and it relieves the pain. So these are the major health benefits of the amla. So this is about the health benefits of the amla. Let us move towards the dosage of amla. As amla fruit, we have to suppose to separate the seed, whatever the pulpy part is there, it should be grinded, dried, so as to will get the powder. And either powder or fruit, it should be consumed with a dosage of 1 to 3 gram per day. Or fruit extract has most often been used by adults in a dosage of 500 to 1000 milligram by mouth daily, 4 to 12 days for a particular disease or the particular disorder or to get the certain health benefit. So amla would be used topically as well as the orally, right? So many types of the formulations of amla are available in the market. There are certain precautions and warnings that we want when we are consuming the amla related products and these precautions are, it should be administered cautiously in a patient with a diabetes, bleeding and liver disorders. In the case of diabetes, as it is having a tendency to lose the blood sugar level, then uh, bleeding, it might thin the blood. So that, that could lead to the bleeding. And certainly, uh, it, is, it should be given cautiously if the patient is suffering from sudden liver disorder. It is going to increase the risk of bleeding and bruising in uh, some of the people already we have discussed. Furthermore, in the case of surgery, the amla should be avoided because risk of bleeding. So these are the certain precautions related with the amla. Let us move towards the drug interactions of the amla. There are two drug interactions are there, which are major one, one which is related with the anticoagulants and antiplatelets, and second, which is related with the antidiabetic medications, the medications which is used to control the blood sugar level. The very first drug interaction, that is the anticoagulant, warfarin. It is a drug, it is going to act as an anticoagulant. Aspirin, it is going to act as an antiplatelet. Both the drugs, they are going to thin the blood. Amla, it is also having the ability to thin the blood. If we are combining the amla with the anticoagulants or the antiplatelet drugs like warfarin or the aspirin, there might be chances of bruising and bleeding. Moreover, the blood, blood becomes a thinner in nature. So one should not combine the amla with the anticoagulants and the antiplatelet drug. So the examples of drugs are, should be avoided with amla like warfarin, aspirin, and 
clopidogrel. So these are the drugs. The second drug interaction, which is related with the diabetes medication, as AMLA, it is going to reduce the blood sugar level. Antidiabetic medications, they are also going to reduce the blood sugar level. If we are combining the AMLA with the antidiabetic medication, that leads to the hypoglycemia. Blood sugar levels are going to be reduced. That may lead to the giddiness and so many other complications are there. So one should avoid taking the AMLA and the antidiabetic medication, isn't it? One should not combine rather the AMLA with the antidiabetic medication. So these are the two important drug interactions of the AMLA. So here with we have finished the drug AMLA. So in this part, we have discussed general introduction about the AMLA. We have discussed the biological source. We have discussed the synonyms. We have seen the various phytoconstituents which are present in the AMLA, then health benefits of the AMLA. Then we have discussed the dosage, precautions, side effects, and the drug interactions of the AMLA.